I think 19th century was about the Industrial Revolution, about electricity, about disrupting the agricultural society and making it more advanced. The 20th century was about physics and engineering to do more things easier in our everyday life from refrigerators to washing machines. How convenient. And the 21st century is definitely the digital age. It's the internet. Even if you want to become a race car driver or play baseball um, or, uh, you know, build a house, all of these things have been turned upside down by software. The Lettuce Bot is a robot that can sense its environment. Every single hour, this Lettuce Bot is seeing 1.5 million plants and it's taking individual action on those plants. We enable lettuce growers to have higher yields in their field by helping make it cheaper, by helping produce food in a more sustainable way. And that wasn't previously possible without computer science and technology. I have a really fun job where we build Polyvore, which kind of combines all my favorite things, so programming as well as fashion and art and design and shopping. <laughs> Half the products you use these days are software products that you play with on maybe your phone, and so if you want to build something cool, you need to know programming, right? And there's so many things that you can do with computer science. So if you just work backwards from the cool thing that you want to build and figure out what that is, a lot of times computer programming is part of that, right? So you should learn the skill. It's really exciting right now. The technology that we're developing right now is going to be used by your doctor in, you know, in the next decade. When you come into the office and you're sick, now the doctor is going to be like, all right, you know, spit in this cup. <laughs> and I will put it into this magic machine, which is a sequencer. And in an hour, I can tell you what you have or what's wrong with you. So if we're looking for a new virus, for example, we'll download a database of all the viruses that are known and we'll search for you know, our sequence of interest against a whole database of all viruses. So you still need somebody to analyze the data. <laughs> the computer is not smart enough yet. <laughs> our software helps people save energy and thereby reduce their carbon emissions. To date, we've saved over eight terawatt hours, which is the equivalent of about 1.1 million cars on the road. When you're forecasting the wind, there's so many different parameters that go into it. It would be impossible for a human to sit down and do all those calculations. We need a computer model in order to forecast it. I write software which scans images. Looking for bad images, images that we know are illegal. I work very closely with organizations like the National Center for Missing Children. I know that the work that we've done has impacted the life of people. And I feel very strongly about it because there's a lot of social problems right now that could really leverage the use of technology. It's a lot about empowering the people who are there helping the world by giving them the tools to be able to do better. That's something that we can do right now and the tools available are huge. The merging of art and technology is getting more and more significant now. Because computers and software are such an integral part of our lives day to day, people are realizing that it can be quite creative to take this medium of computers and create incredible works of art. In Finding Nemo, when Crush and Squirt and all the friends are flying through the East Australian current, you're seeing images of water flowing by, you're seeing the colors on the back of the turtle, you're seeing the sides of the fish. All of those things are generated through math and computer programs that we write that we then give to the artists and they take that to, to create that final image and tweak it and make it look beautiful and look fun. The crux of it is really about invention. It's about looking at the world and, and being dissatisfied with things and questioning everything. I always felt like if I didn't learn how to program, it, it would be like not learning how to read. You know, the, the, the future would just be closed to me. If you're in the coding profession, there's so many things that you can do and you can pretty much pick and choose the course you want to be in. I think that I mean, you can start something in you know, your college dorm room and you can have a set of people who haven't built a big company before come together and 
build something that a billion people use as part of their, their daily lives is, is just crazy to think about, right? It's really, it's humbling and it's amazing. Really, it's about the chance to reinvent things and then see it out there in the world and see people using it and having fun or having a better life because of something that wasn't there before that you put in the world. What was it? Play the robot, El Tino. Do you think computer programming is boring? That's because you've never seen El Tino before. El Tino is an assistant of software education. Altino is an intelligent robot with dynamic motions based on various sensors, batteries that last up to eight hours, and highly efficient durability appropriate for its dynamic motions. Nothing can compete with Altino. Altino can adjust its sensors according to the environment. It can be controlled by an integrated computer program or smartphone. Learn how to code if you want to communicate with the robot. As many dots gather to create a line, many algorithms gather to move the robot. Your every task will be exciting if you do it with the intelligent robot, Altino. Sophisticated design and dynamic algorithm technology cultivates your creativity based on logics with easy and fun education experience. You are ready to be an expert of coding with Altino. Let's play Altino. Play the robot Altino. Coding is much easier now. Bringing imagination to reality. An intelligent robot maker, Sion Company Limited. Thank you. 